on the radio, but to be with you in person is even better. Thanks, Alex. Thanks for doing the interview. Yeah, I'm really happy to be talking to you. How's the tour going? Well, the tour's been going really great. Machine Head is a great band. Um, play them on my station, and, and uh, Suicide Silence is a new band that a lot of people are, are finding a lot of interest in, and, and um, the uh, guys in the opening band, uh, Arcadium, very interesting band too. I like the front man. He's very, very, very timid backstage. When he gets out on stage, he, he really, you know, besides the fact he looks like he weighs about 80 pounds, he, he really has got a great persona and I was surprised. So I, I think that band's going to have some good things if he eats a couple of cheeseburgers, you know. Endgame, uh, it's getting just incredible reviews everywhere. I was in a coffee shop today and just opened up the Dallas Observer and there were two just raving reviews saying it's one of your best albums ever and uh, really avant-garde. What is the message of Endgame? Well, a lot of people thought that that was uh, signifying the end of my career because, you know, I've got issues with my, my uh, skeletal manners and stuff like that, uh, with head banging and stuff. And, um, with the way that the music business is right now, with the record companies finally getting what they deserve, um, it's uh, it's interesting because the music industry is is falling as quickly as you know what, what we're talking about. You know, that watching again, it's corporate greed in America because it's all the big conglomerate record companies, and you know, like for example, EMI is owned by Thorn, from what I know, and they make the Warhead. So um, you know, there's a lot of weirdness with who owns the record labels and stuff like that. I love EMI, but I had no idea. I talked to Jello Biafra from the Dead Kennedys, and I asked him to do a side project with me. And he goes, "No way, man! You're on EMI. Those guys make bombs." And I was like. What? <laughs> so I had no idea. And of course, he told me that Oldsmobile made machine guns for the Nazis, too, and stuff like that, which totally tripped me out, but I had no idea. Well, pretty much everything, in one way or another, is a subsidiary of the military industrial complex. It's been like that since the days of Eisenhower. So I mean, as long as the message is getting out, mm -hmm. uh, I think that's actually to the anger of the establishment. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I had a guy from the UN actually called me up. If you can, well, not call me up, but he said something about United Abominations, and it, this shows how pea brain this guy was. He, at the very end, after he tried to say to discredit me, he says, "Besides, I'm a Metallica fan, anyways." And I thought, "What a twat!" You know, because I, I mean, you know, I am part Metallica. So what are you saying? That's like going up to somebody who's mulatto and saying they don't have white or black in them. You know, I am part Metallica. So for him to say that, it just shows you why the you know most of the people up there don't know what they're doing because you know you have people that are representing stuff saying childish things like that that's sandbox mentality you know what I mean <laughs> Talk about Endgame, you talk about these greedy, corrupt mega corporations. Uh, from your own research, what do you believe their Endgame is? Uh, well, I, I believe it's the same thing you and I both believe. Me as a Christian, I believe that it's one world government, one world currency, and uh, you know, it's, it's part of my belief. Uh, I said so in, in Holy Wars, you know, it's part of the master plan. It's what I believe. I ascribe to that when I became a Christian. I know that there's going to be a, a, a cataclysmic uh, ramping up of all of these things that we're seeing right now and, and it gets worse and it gets worse and it gets worse and we're watching our country disintegrate right now and it's scary. You know, when I start thinking that I'm going to be moving with Sean Drover back up to Canada, that's scary. 
you know, and, and uh, that's what Endgame is all about. It's about educating our fans and showing them a little bit about what's going on within the previous administration. And, you know, it's, uh, just things haven't changed at all. And it, it's just more of this whole um, people being run by the, the people who have the money. something that when we had the dollars before and it had red ink on it? Yes. Tell me that story. I had heard that that was Kennedy was supposed yeah, no, to. that's true. He was going to get rid of the Federal Reserve mm -hmm. and he made the money with red ink and that's part mm -hmm. of like. Pow. You can go into any coin shop, Dave, uh, and say, I want a Lincoln Greenback issued by Kennedy. Mm -hmm. And you'll probably have to pay $20, 30 for it because it's a collector. And they'll go under the counter and they'll pull it out and it has a red seal. But more importantly, and it was only fives, he only issued the first $4 billion. And when you read on the top of it, it says United States note. Nowhere does it say Federal Reserve. So it was yeah. pre-1913 when the private banks took over. And he signed the executive order to fully phase out, because he didn't want to do it overnight, mm -hmm. because that would cause some problems, mm -hmm. to fully phase out the private banks that had taken over the issuance of currency and credit. Mm -hmm. And from uh, talking to you know, all the top real researchers on JFK, it wasn't making the decision to pull it out of Vietnam. That was part of it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the decision to stop trying to have war with the Soviets. It wasn't the decision to not continue the Bay of Pigs. The main reason they killed him was what you just said, because he was going to take the power away from the money changers. That's what I heard. In fact, I'll mail you a uh, Lincoln Greenback. I'll take it. <laughs> That's when he got Lincoln killed. Uh, the Rothschilds and others came to him and said, we'll loan you money at 30% interest to fight the, the, the war, which they were financing in the South for the British to destabilize the country. This is all in mainline history, but not mm -hmm. popularly taught. And he said, no way, I'll just start issuing our own money again. And so as soon as the war ended, they killed him over that again. So that's why it's called the Lincoln Greenback, because that was the last time it's since happened. Andrew Jackson that mm -hmm. money had been issued. So he didn't have to go get a law passed. Kennedy could say, well, as president, I can reissue any currency that's already been out there. Mm. And that got him killed. But I don't want to sit here and give a history lesson. But no, that's good, because right. it'll probably end up in a song. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> wow. Pick of the week by the Dallas Observer uh, for all the concerts going on in Dallas. Uh, and it's uh, Justin's pick of the week. And he says, Megadeth, who recently put out their masterwork with Endgame, a relentless assault on corruption, FDIC, the banks, military occupations, and the mind scramble of today's world gone insane. With David